Welcome back to the equine anatomy lectures. Um, we talked about the head of the horse, the neck, the thorax, and the abdominal cavity. And now we're talking about the fifth topic, and that is the uh, female genital system. Uh, before I start talking about um, the anatomy of the, of the female uh, reproductive organs, I would like to uh, also remind you of the, of the email um, at the bottom of the um, slide. So if you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to, to, to write to me and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any questions or, or concerns. Um, again, as, as always, uh, first I would like to talk about the significance of, of the topic. Why should we understand and learn the anatomy of the female reproductive system? And then we'll talk about the different structures of this system uh, in the pelvic cavity uh, and, and also uh, their uh, uh, clinical significance. Uh, then I will um, uh, take each of the structures, each of the parts of the of the reproductive uh, system for the female uh, horse, and we'll start talking about that uh, in in detail. So, so first of all, why why it's important to study the uh, reproductive system of of, uh, of the mare? Well, it's it's important because we're going to see it, uh, or we're going to feel it. Uh, during rectal palpation, so we have to evaluate it. Also, we have to evaluate it for breeding soundness, uh, pregnancy diagnosis, and a number of, of uh, diseases. So, so, so for that, we have to remember them. Um, rectal palpation is extremely important in, in equine, and this is one of the most um, uh, utilized, uh, if you will, Techniques to evaluate the uh, the uh, reproductive system of the uh, uh, of the mare um, uh, during during breeding soundness we have to, to make sure that the ovaries of of certain size and also uh, there's there's no inflammations or infections um, ovulation took place at the um, at the time that uh, you know for for mating and things like that. Um, also, after after fertilization um, is, is is done, um, we need to uh, monitor basically the progress of the of the fetus. So, pregnancy diagnosis to see if if the if the mare is pregnant or not, and then to see if the if the um, if the foal is is basically um, alive and in good condition um, to 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 uh, for delivery, basically, uh, the the last one is is basically a number of important diseases that, that can affect the horse. It can, sometimes it's it's sometimes they're, they're they they can they can um, uh, affect humans, uh, especially veterinarians because and and people who work with horses because these are the two group of people that basically have direct communication with the. Um, with the, with these horses who are affected with those with those diseases, so we have to be very careful about the anatomy of the uh, of the uh, reproductive system in the mare, so we can understand um, basically how to diagnose these diseases and then how to to uh, treat them. Uh, rectal palpation is is basically one of the most important uh, uh, procedures that. Um, an equine veterinarian uh, utilizes on daily basis basically very important and only to, to evaluate the abdominal cavity as I mentioned in the previous uh, lectures but also to evaluate uh, uh, the vitality of the uh, uh, reproductive system in, in the in the female horse in the mare um, the size of the ovaries the shape of the ovaries if there's any growth um, you know on the surface of the ovaries or the uterus and the and the, and the, and the surface cervix um, all all of these all of these must be evaluated during rectal uh, uh, palpation. Second thing is breeding soundness. We have to we have to make sure that the uh, reproductive system of the female is uh, basically in in a in a pretty good condition in order for us to uh, be able to get uh, healthy uh, foals out of these uh, mares and keep them healthy as well. So so breeding soundness. Uh, if we don't understand the anatomy of the of the equine reproductive system, 
um, it, it, it becomes pretty difficult if there's if there's certain tumors if there's certain diseases that prevents the um, that prevent the um, mare or prevent the ovaries from from ovulating or prevent the uterus from accepting the fertilized uh, um, egg that 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 becomes a problem uh, both financial and also you know from a pet standpoint we 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 want a healthy foal and we want a healthy uh, stallion and all, as well as a, as a healthy mare so we have to understand the anatomy of the uh, reproductive system of 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 the mare and, and of course later on we're going to study the the um, the, uh, the male reproductive system Pregnancy diagnosis, one of the most important and very common a, um, uh, procedures that, that equine, uh, equine uh, veterinarians utilize all the time, uh, especially uh, using the, the ultrasound uh, technique uh, to see if ovulation took place and also if fertilization uh, uh, took place as well. So, so these are very, very important uh, things that we need we need to uh, to uh, uh, remember. So so from this we will understand that um, studying the reproductive system is very very important. So again we, we have a number of of diseases that can affect the uh, the uh, the reproductive tract of the female. Um, this is this is one of the you know uh, one of the diseases one of the cases that you can see uh, you know uh, retained placenta um, uh, sometimes dystocia or or uh, 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 malpositioning of the fetus in the in the uterus which which causes difficulty uh, during parturition and things like that all of this is extremely important so so for that I hope I I convinced you that studying the reproductive system and the anatomy of the reproductive system is is important so we then come to uh, uh, face uh, a number of facts number one is where is this this system located the reproductive system of the female is located in the pelvic cavity in the pelvic cavity this cavity is roofed by the sacrum and first two to three caudal vertebra and this narrowed caudally you can see caudally it's narrowing so you are looking at the head of the horse or the mare and this circle is toward the rectum or toward the tail the lateral wall of the pelvic cavity is protected by the sacrosciatic ligament we will see more pictures to show the ligament the sacrosciatic ligament and the floor is relatively horizontal flat and formed by the fusion of the pelvic symphysis one and two one and two so the union between the pelvic symphysis one and two forms the floor of the pelvic cavity the pelvic cavity also has a large inlet and a smaller outlet a large inlet and a small outlet now the pelvic inlet in the female is rounded and wide to accommodate the fetus later on whereas in the male it's angular and cramped you will see that later but this is in the female it's rounded 
and wide, pretty wide. The inlet is rounded and pretty wide. So again, the roof or the dorsal of the pelvic cavity is the sacrum and the first couple of caudal vertebra. The ventral aspect of the pelvic cavity is horizontal and it's formed by the union of the two symphysis and the lateral walls are protected by the sacrosciatic ligaments. It has a large inlet and a smaller outlet. The inlet in the mare is rounded and wide, whereas in the male it is angular and cramped. This is just to show you how the size of the inlet is way larger than the outlet. And that's basically understandable because it gives a good a, um, a path for the fetus to, to, to get out of the, uh, of, the, um, of the pelvic cavity. Now here is another picture to show you what I'm talking about. This is the inlet the bigger circle and this is the outlet the smaller circle and this is basically the sacrosciatic ligament the sacrosciatic ligament which basically protects the pelvic cavity from both sides lateral sides of the pelvic cavity are protected by the sacrosciatic ligament now to compare between to compare between males and females the inlet is wide and rounded whereas here it's angular and cramped small in size compared to the female the female is large again because it it will accommodate the a uh, 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 the the fetus now where are the pelvic organs in the pelvic cavity. So, the very first structure that we will see in the pelvic cavity is the terminal part of the rectum and the anal canal, which is part of the gastrointestinal tract. Ventral to that, ventral to that, you will see the uterus. the uterus and ventral to that you will see the bladder urinary bladder so we have the rectum and the anal canal we have Ventral to that is the reproductive organs, mainly the uterus, the two uterine horns, and ventral to that also is the bladder. Let's take a look at a different section. So rectum, reproductive organ, and bladder. And this is the picture I was talking about. We have the rectum. 
we have the reproductive organs and we have the bladder number seven rectum is number one and two the reproductive organs is four five and three and bladder is number seven now it's very important to realize that part of the reproductive system is retroperitoneally meaning that it is not included in the peritoneal cavity just as part of the rectum is not included in the peritoneal cavity and also the bladder is not included in the peritoneal cavity we call that retroperitoneal this line here represents the peritoneum and it traps around it the bladder and the reproductive organs so part of the rectum the reproductive organs and the bladder are outside the peritoneal cavity meaning that they are not covered by the peritoneum this is very important we'll talk about that later but remember that for now that the bladder the reproductive system and part of the rectum is retroperitoneal they're not in the peritoneal cavity they're not covered by the peritoneum so if we want to do surgery that is a very good thing to do because we will have no or low risk of causing peritonitis which is very important in in in, in uh, equine so so this is for the female now what what is what, what about the what about the male uh, uh, pelvic organs the pelvic organs of the male are rectum and bladder and then you have a number of accessory reproductive glands we will talk about that we will talk about that when we talk about the the uh, male reproductive system but this is to show you the limitation of the pelvic uh, um, uh, cavity because of it's a smaller size in males compared to females this is a picture of the male or the stallion and you can see here this this part here is the peritoneum as I said, this so part of the rectum is per, retroperitoneal. This is the rectum. This is the rectum. After that, you will have the bladder and then some accessory, some accessory sex glands in males so very important to realize that you have a rectum you have a bladder and you have some accessory sex glands all in the pelvic cavity we will talk about that when we talk about the male reproductive system but from the previous picture and from this picture you will find that some of the parts are located retroperitoneally I keep repeating this word so you can memorize what it means it means that they are not contained in the peritoneal cavity they are in the pelvic cavity and they're not covered by peritoneum which lowers the risk for peritonitis i repeated that twice or three times that's because it's important and because we will utilize this location 
the retro peritoneal location when we do a number of things. It's very important. So what's the significance of, of this location, the retro peritoneal location? The retro peritoneal location basically help us in fixing rectal vaginal tears. Rectal vaginal tears, when, when, when the rectum and the vagina tears due to, to forceful delivery of some sort, uh, the, the tear in these two uh, structures is easier to be fixed if the tear is outside the peritoneal cavity and it's not covered by the peritoneum. So that's, that's a very important thing because, it, again, it reduces the uh, chances for peritonitis. The other thing is bladder catheterization. I mentioned earlier that the, uh, the uh, bladder is located retroperitoneally. So it's very easy to catheterize it to get urine samples for analysis and for examination. Very important. There's also another a, a procedure that's called transvaginal colpotomy. Transvaginal colpotomy is basically ovariectomy, but through the vagina. Ovariectomy, but through the vagina. Again, why do we use this? We use it because the ovaries are retroperitoneal. So we make an incision in the vagina. We grab the, the, the ovaries and we take them out through the vagina. We don't go into the peritoneal cavity. These things are very important. We have to remember that the retroperitoneal position of the reproductive system and the bladder in horses, the mare we're talking about right now, is extremely important because it helps to reduce the chances for peritonitis and the, for example, and the bladder is extremely easy to, to, to access and also um, to to remove the the ovaries. So let's let's look take a look at, at some of these examples. This is a rectovaginal fistula right here. This is the rectum, this is the vagina, and this is the fistula between them, the opening between between them, okay, canal between them. So because these are retroperitoneally their fixing is easier. So all all what you need is to restructure if you will do plastic surgery, restructure the, the rectum, and then you restructure the vagina, and uh, the, the, the horse will heal with no infections and with no, with no problems. So this is the importance of the retroperitoneal uh, 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 positioning. Another thing is uh, the, the bladder is retroperitoneally, okay, and then the opening for the bladder in the floor between the vagina and the vestibule, which is almost the terminal part of the female reproductive system, it's very easy and accessible to, to, to uh, catheterize the, uh, the bladder in the, in the uh, uh, female. Very easy to, to catheterize it. So, so the examiner uh, in, put their hands in the vagina and they feel between the vagina and the vestibule where the opening of the bladder is, and they put the catheter inside it, and then they uh, uh, take um, uh, urine uh, from there. So this is this is a very very important this is a very important thing. The third thing that I mentioned is the the transvaginal colpotomy, and this is the transvaginal colpotomy. It's basically, as I mentioned earlier. It's, it's a transvaginal approach or vaginal spay, they call it. So, so basically, in, in simple terminology, you are taking the ovaries, you are removing the ovaries of the mare through the vagina. So you don't open the abdomen, you don't do any major surgery. All what you, and I'm going to show you uh, uh, where it's going to be done and, and how it's going to be done. In, in, the, in, the, in the dorsal wall of the vagina, you open you open an, an, an opening that is, that is suitable for, for a, an instrument to, to, uh, to go inside that, that um, um, incision. You go to the, to the fornix, to the area where you have the ovaries, 
and you can you can grab the ovaries and uh, 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 cut them and and uh, remove them through the uh, vaginal um, uh, wall. Um, minimum blood, uh, you know, minimum bleeding, um, and 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 this can be done uh, pretty effectively in cases of granulosa cell tumors in the ovaries. So these are very very important uh, uh, cases in in equine. L let's 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 for example see how 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 and where we're going to do the surgery. So so this is basically the the rectum. This is the vagina, and here's the bladder. These are part of the uterine horns, okay? And this is the bladder. So what, what, what you do is you open in the dorsal wall of the vagina. You make your opening, and then the surgeon puts their hand in the vagina and insert a tool in the vagina to the ovaries, and they grab the ovaries, And they cut them and they remove them through this opening again. Let's see. Let's see how how that's done. Maybe maybe a couple more pictures. So you've seen this this slide before, and this is this is to show you that um, the organs are transvaginal. Uh, the, the organs are uh, uh, rectal peritoneal. Sorry, and then this is the vagina. So in the dorsal wall here, you you make your incision. Again, you are not in the peritoneal cavity. Once you open a, an incision in the dorsal wall of the vagina, you put a tool here, eucrasia, they call, we call it, and we get it toward the, uter you, the, the ovaries. They are hanging from, from the dorsal to the ventral through the broad ligament. And, 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 and basically, you grab them and you, uh, you, you cut them to, to take them out the dorsal uh, wall. So let's see another picture. Here, this is the eucrasia. This is the eucrasia, and it basically what you do is you do the the uh, the uh, incision in the dorsal uh, aspect uh, of the or on the dorsal wall of the vagina, and you insert the eucrasia. You insert the eucrasia guided by the palm of your hand inside that dorsal incision all the way to get to the ovaries and you put the the chain around that ovary once you put the chain around the ovary the free hand outside you with your free hand outside you start squeezing on on the on the eucrasia once you you hear the cutting took place you stay about a couple minutes just to make sure that no bleeding is, is gonna is gonna happen and then after that you take the ovary along with the uh, 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 eucrasia from the dorsal incision that you you made. Uh, pretty, pretty minimum bleeding as I mentioned and and the, the main thing for this is basically because you are uh, uh, trying to avoid the peritoneal cavity. This is this is very important. This is very important. So you're minimizing the the the, the um, uh, prevalence of peritonitis, and you have minimum bleeding. Why are you uh, uh, avoiding the peritonitis? Because all of these organs, the reproductive organ, the bladder, and the terminal part of the of the rectum, are all retroperitoneal. Um, okay, so so now. We we finished basically the clinical significances of, of the, the the positioning of, of the reproductive organs uh, in the pelvic cavity, and we've talked about the pelvic cavity and its its uh, you know its borders, if you will. Um, in the next uh, uh, talk, what I will do is I'll talk about each of the uh, each part of the reproductive system in the in the female. Uh, uh, horse. So next time I will talk about the ovaries, oviducts, uterus, cervix, vagina, vestibule, and vulva. And with each one of them, I will mention uh, some of the clinical cases that uh, uh, that are associated with this this structure.